Hello, and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I thought we'd take another look at the New York Times hard Sudoku. We've looked at this a couple of times before, and it's always been of a very high quality. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's try and solve it. Um, as usual, we'll be using the notation we recommend, which is uh, there's an example in this 3x3 three three box. So the 2 in this 3x3 three three box can only go in exactly 2 positions. And therefore, I allow myself to make these pencil marks. Um, they're the only pencil marks that we use. Um, and once you get into the habit of using them this way, you can a number of things that you're able to spot during the solve, um, which tend to be helpful. Anyway, let's go through and see what we can see. So far, it's all pencil marks, no actual numbers, which is, oops, it's not a nine, I meant to write a seven. 7, 7 in those two positions, see 7's isolated into those two positions in this 3x3 three three box, um, Four's locked into these two squares, Three's down here, Two. Uh, if we use twos in this box as well as fours, you can see actually we can find a nice double here on twos and fours, which might prove to be helpful. So we certainly need to use this now because if you like this, this two by two square is locked up. So I immediately want to look at this six and see if uh, that's going to help with anything. Apparently not, but it was worth a try. Seven's in here. Oh, no, just spotted that. This needs to be a three, which will allow us to pencil mark threes in to so these two positions. And here we have our first nice piece of logic. In fact, there's a number of nice things that follow from this three, but let's look at the arrangement of threes in rows seven and nine to start with. You can see in this three by three box, because of the notation we use, we have a three in one of these two positions. We've just discovered there's a three in one of these two positions too. Now, it's now immediately clear that there can be no more threes in rows seven and nine. And you can prove that to yourself by just asking yourself, well, you know, if if this is a three, for example, what would happen? If this was a three, this cell would have to contain a three because of the logic of our notation. And this cell would have to contain a three. You can't have two threes in the same row. So uh, it should be clear that there's no more threes in rows seven and rows nine. And in fact, the arrangement of threes will either be a three here and a three here or a three here and a three here. So this is an example of something called an X-Wing, which we've covered in many of the videos on the channel. But the reason this is very useful here is it affects this box. So in this box, we know that the threes cannot be in either row seven or row nine, so they have to be in row eight. And look at that. That allows us to discover this, this double, this three seven pair in this box. Um, and immediately we need to think about how we can use that. This one now interacts very nicely with this box. We're able to place the ones into these two positions. Um, nothing further at this stage. Um, but I might also, because of this 3, 7 now, be checking uh, 1, 2, 5 and 9 uh, along row 8 just to see whether that can give me anything else. You can see it will allow me to place 5s into these two positions. Um, this cell here is limited to being a 1 or a 2, but nothing further, I think, at this stage. Now, going back to this box, again, we've got one of these nice 2x2 two two arrangements, so we need to use this 9. This 9 is going to allow us to place 
pencil marks into those two positions. And there's pencil marks up there like that. And it allows pencil marks down here like that. Um, okay. Hmm. Not seeing anything immediately obvious now. So at this point, we'd need to start scanning rows and columns that contain a number of digits. Um, now, interestingly, I don't think we have any rows and columns with five cell, five digits yet. So we're going to have to look at fours. See what we can see. Let's have a look at, I think, column eight. Yes, column eight. <laughs> it's quite nice. It's not an easy spot, though. We, we need to ask ourselves the question, where can a seven go in column eight? We can go here. It can't go here because of this 7, it can't go here because of this 7, it can't go here because of this 7, and it can't actually go here because you remember this 7-3 combination that we found earlier. So, so in fact, the 7 can only go in one square now, in, uh, in the, that's this one. Um, now I wonder if that's helpful. I'm able to pencil mark sixes into these two positions. Two, four, six, and eight to place. You can see again, can pencil mark twos in now as well. Ah, but we can use the the fact that we have these twos in here look which forces the two not to be it cannot be in this position it's got to be higher it's got to be in this position and the moment we write the two in here we're also able to write in the six because of the logic of our notation um, so we're left with four and eight to place into these two squares let's put those in like that now we've got five numbers in row one. And you can see what do we need here. We need four, five, six, and nine. And four and six appearing in column five here. Which means that the four and six in row one both need to appear in these three cells. So we can put the fours in. There's no way of tracking the sixes position now, but this box is now getting, this cell in particular, looks like it's getting very restricted. So if we look, we've got 178 down the column, um, 2 in the box here, and 356 across here. So two, three, 4 is, is ruled out because of this 4 combination needing to be in one of these two cells. So what can this possibly be? It can only be a 9, I think. This cell has to be a nine. Um, it might be useful. Let's see. Nine, nine. Yes, it is going to be hugely useful. So the first thing we can do is to place nines into these two positions. But we can also write in a nine up here because of the pencil marks we made earlier. So now we've got four, five, and six along these three positions. Which again, we've just got to remember that because the five and the six can go in any of these three positions at the moment. Uh, oh no, actually the six is forced over by these two sixes here, so that's useful. We can put sixes into there. Therefore, this has to be a five. Um, yeah, I think the puzzle's going to crack now. Five's there. Why do I say that? Well, we got this five over here, which is obviously a nice find. Um, but the reason I think it's going to be interesting is now this box is getting even more restricted. Let's look at this cell: two, three, four, five, six. But you can see that two is here, 
and five, four, four, five, and six are all here. So this this cell can only be a three. Now, which is another nice spot. So let's put that in. Um, so what are we left with? One seven eight into this box. Okay. But we can this four six here. We've got the four in the column here. Mustn't forget to use that. That's um. That means this must be the 4, this must be the 6. Well, that must be helpful, surely. Yes. So now if we look at this column, we need to find a 5 and a 6 and a 2. But look, we've already got the 2 and a 6 here. So in fact, we're able to pencil mark 6s into this box here which means this must be the 5. Let's roll that out of there. This box is now getting extremely restricted. You can see that the missing pair now is going to be 1 and 5. In, I'll, I'll just fill it in for the sake of good order. This has got to be 1 and 5. We have a 5 in column 3 already. So this is a 5 and this is a 1. Pencil mark the ones in up here for good order. And okay. So this nine here, this nine here is affecting this three by three box down here. It's very useful again. Immediately we can write in two numbers because of our pencil marks, nine and five. Um, into these two positions, pencil mark fives here. This is force this one now is affecting this box. Um, you can see it's forcing a one up into one of these three positions, which means that we can pencil mark ones into one of those two positions in that box. Uh, nines here again using the some marks we did earlier, we can locate this 9 now here. Let's remove this pencil mark. Ah, and there's a now. If we look at this column, uh, column 7, and ask where we can place a 4, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here because of the um, these 4s, the cursor's moving around, so the 4's got to go here. Four. This is an eight, and I think now we are there. I'd be very surprised if there's anything more to find in the puzzle. Um, you can see this four in particular is going to allow us to write a four here, which is going to allow us to write a three here and a seven here immediately. Um, and now this means that we can place a 3 into this position. And so can we do lots of other things? This has got to be a 7. This has got to be an 8. This has got to be a 1. This has got to be an 8. And this has got to be a 2. Which means this is a 2. And there we go. I mean, I think we're done. I think uh, there won't be anything more to find in the puzzle now. Um, but again, another really, um, really good example of a, a challenging but doable Sudoku. You know, it didn't involve anything controversially difficult, it, but it did require some good technique um, and had a couple of nice logical steps. And I, for that reason, I really quite admire these. Um, hard New York Times puzzles. They are of a very good standard. Um, so I hope those of you who've watched this have, uh, have got something out of my solve here. Um, apologies if the audio quality is slightly lower than we'd like at the moment. I'm using a laptop uh, today, which is not normally the case. Um, you can see I'm not even having to think as I'm, because of the, the work we've done earlier, <laughs> 
with the pencil marks it's actually um, almost becomes cathartic just filling in the, the numbers once you get to this sort of point I don't have to do any thinking and I can almost manage to talk um, and solve at the same time um, so what do we need here 4 and 8 ok let's put that square root of 4 it's going to be an 8 8 6 6 2 2 and there we go so thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.